tip time. Um, I thought I would share a tip today um, because I don't do that very often. And the next couple of videos I'm gonna put out will, uh, will be a little bit different, so there's less time for me to kind of share tips and stuff. Um, I'm quite well known for my panning work. Uh, panning is a photography tip, if you don't know, that basically involves uh, moving with a subject and keeping a really slow shutter speed in order to basically blur everything and make everything streaky and nice around the subject but keep that subject like tack sharp and um, that's the basics of it and you get people who are very good at it you get people who are okay at it um, and there's a lot of kind of in between um, but here's how i pan basically so as i'm talking i'll drop some photos in so that you can see it what I'm looking to do while I'm panning is a couple of things. One, my thought process beforehand is always about uh, what that end picture is going to look like. So it's not just a case of kind of moving with the subject and just seeing what I get. I'm always thinking about whether that subject's going to be very small in frame, whether that subject's going to be very dominant in frame. Do I need to be at a certain focal length to kind of get the right kind of look and feel that I want to do? And then once I've done that, I do two things. One is select the shutter speed that I want, and I use uh, shutter priority mode on my Canons uh, to do this, so that, that I let the camera then roam and figure the rest out. Because for me, I'm just concentrating on the shutter speed, that's all actually I'm interested in. And lots of people do this manually and that's fine, I don't, I do this um, kind of automat semi-automatically, um, because I want to create the photo that I want to create. So what I do is, um, I'll usually, if I haven't panned for a little while, i.e. it's been a couple of days, or you know, I've been focused on still stuff in a particular event, and I haven't done panning at that thing for a little bit, what I tend to do is I'll flick into a shutter speed around about 50th to 60th of a second, and just kind of get in with the flow. A big part of panning is moving, which I'll talk about in a second. So getting used to that movement, getting used to that flow is really important. And then once I've got that, then I'll work my way down, and I'll work my way down until I can create the image that I want to create. And depending on the speed of the movement will depend on what I get. So the first thing you need to do when you think about panning is select that shutter speed. And that shutter speed can be anything that you're comfortable with really from one fifteenth of a second through to sixtieth of a second, depending on how fast that movement is. So take triathlon, for example. Um, triathletes on a bike will move really quickly. So what you want, what you can do with a triathlete or with a cyclist is you can really slow that shutter speed down. But the faster that object, that person, that subject is moving, actually the faster your shutter speed can go. Because if they're moving very, very quickly, it doesn't take a lot of movement on your part to blur the background because they're moving so quickly. Um, so I'll give you an example. So you've got a triathlete who's absolutely whizzing by, you can go at 1 50th of a second shutter speed and track through that athlete and the movement of your body and the movement of your camera will basically blur out the background nicely as long as you keep that person tack sharp. If you've got a runner who's going a lot slower, you're, to get that similar effect you need to really slow your shutter speed down. And that then becomes harder because that subject's moving really slowly comparatively to the cyclist. So what you have to do is kind of find that happy medium. And it's really about practice. The second kind of tip that I'll give you is all about movement. Panning is not this, it's not a wrist flick. Okay, lots of people will get a camera and they'll try and flick the wrists to bring the movement through to the camera. So as that subject's moving across in front of you, or them, sorry, what they're doing is they're flicking their wrist. It's all about the movement of the wrist. There's too much movement there. Okay? There's no way you'll keep it straight and level and it'll act like some weird gimbal that's basically rotating the camera around. So what you need to do is you need to tuck your elbows in okay, and you need to hold the camera nice and steady and it becomes a body movement. Okay, It becomes a movement from the hips all the way through the body, all the way locking the shoulders and everything moves in one. If you try and flip through the wrist you'll get loads more out of focus shots than if you tuck it in and move in one. So pick your shutter speed. The lower you can go, the more blur you'll get, but the harder that photo then becomes to take. It's really difficult. The slower, the slowest I've ever gone, ever gone, was one sixth of a second, and that was at track cycling, and that was hard. That was so hard that I couldn't actually look through the camera shutter, uh, the camera viewfinder, sorry, because the shutter was closing for so long, 
I couldn't actually track. So I was having to look through my left eye in order to basically follow the movement of that track cyclist through. So get your shutter speed, find what's comfortable and then work downwards. So decrease that shutter speed if you can. So you're shooting for the shutters open for longer. And then the second tip is really kind of move that body. Um, and don't do it out of the hands, don't flick through with the wrists, it's all got to be on the movement of the body. It's like a golf swing, it all comes from the hips and from the torso, it doesn't come from flicking the wrists at the end, alright? So you've got to really move that body. The third kind of side tip I would say is to let the camera figure the rest out. So like, I shoot in shutter pro mode because it's flipping easier, right? If you're sitting there trying to like work out what aperture you need and um, you know what ISO you need for that you're gonna forever be kind of overthinking it I have panned before in places where I've got a dark background and a light portion of the background in the same frame and I'm tracking an athlete through that through that point and what happens is if you've got that background going on your camera is gonna jump around it trying to expose it because you can't it can't figure it out in manual so the biggest thing I will say is just stick it in something like shutter priority mode Work out what shutter speed you want, let the camera figure that out. And then if you have to overexpose or underexpose, you can do on the dials on the back, um, and that's a pretty easy way to kind of get that exposure pretty much right. A little, uh, another little tip I would say is, um, it's probably tip number four, is to uh, pre-focus. So I auto-focus, so I'm letting my camera track with that subject because the autofocus system on my cameras is pretty good. So I can rely on that to pretty much track that subject, whether it's got things in front of it, whether it's moving in and out of stuff, and it's pretty good at tracking. So I, I will happily leave the brains in the camera, that's fine. But I will pre-focus so that it hasn't got a search, my camera focus hasn't got a search for too long to get there. So if, for example, you've got your uh, subject that you're tracking here, and you've got a subject in front of it, if you're then, if you pre-focus where you think your subject's gonna be, and already have it focused in that point, it's less searching time, especially if that subject's moving really, really quickly. So if I've got, again, triathletes for an example, and I'm shooting through a crowd, I'll pre-focus on where the uh, course is, because then once I've picked that rider or that runner or that athlete up, it's already pretty much there, that focus. It doesn't need to search too far to get to it. That focus can then lock on and away we go. So that's my random rambly panning video explanation. Um, I will drop some examples in so that you can see. Uh, panning is all about practice, it's all about just doing it over and over and over and over again. You're, you, it's, it's much easier I find to lock out on a really good action still photo than it is a panning motion photo, it's much harder. Um, so it's about practice, practice, practice. I used to sit and photograph cars going past on the road, like just literally practicing over and over and over again. So go and give it a try. There's some really, really good uh, exponents, proponents. There's some really good examples of this around the internet. So just bang it in a Pinterest search bar or something and go and find some cool ones. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely cool when you pull it off. And that hopefully will help. <laughs>